Hi, this is Rebecca from YarnAndChai.com and this is the video tutorial for my Cabin Fever cowl pattern. This is an easy level pattern written in American Standard terms. The finished size of this oversized cowl is about 35 inches around by 14 inches tall. For this pattern, I used an H hook, which is a five millimeter. Now the way to know if you also need to use an H hook for this pattern, or if you need to do a different hook, is to do a gauge check. The gauge for this pattern, when done in the third loops, 15 half double crochets times 13 rows is four inches square. So in other words, you would work up the swatch, 13 rows of 15 half double crochets, and you would work those all in the third loops, and you would measure if it's a four inch square, you're good to go with an H hook. If it's bigger than four inches, you would want to downsize your hook or use a thinner yarn. If it's smaller than four inches square, then you're going to want to go the other direction, use a bigger hook or a thicker yarn. So for the yarn for this pattern, in the sample photos, you're going to see the sample cowl created with Stitch Studio by Nicole Earth Tone. This is a number four medium weight yarn in the Erin subcategory that can be found at AC Moore stores, which are kind of local to Eastern United States. So if you don't live near an AC Moore store and you don't want to order online, you can look for another similar Erin weight yarn, maybe a Vanna's Choice by Lion Brand or an I Love This Yarn by Hobby Lobby. Any of those kinds of yarns are gonna work really good for this um, pattern. And if you're concerned about it coming out the exact same size as my cowl, again, you're gonna wanna do a gauge check whatever yarn you choose, even if you use the exact same yarn I'm using. Now for this video tutorial, I am going to use a different yarn. I'm gonna be using Yarn B's Must Be Merino Erin because I think you will be able to see my stitches a lot better with a solid colored yarn as opposed to the tweedy look of the earth tone. You're going to need about 410 yards of color A and 140 yards of color B. And you're also gonna need a yarn needle for weaving in your ends. And when you're done with this video tutorial, be sure to check out the tutorial for the matching slouch hat. One last thing before we begin, please read the video description below if there have been any changes or error corrections to this pattern since the publishing of this video tutorial, they'll be listed in the video description under pattern updates. Let's get started. So we're going to start our pattern with something called foundation half double crochet. Now this is an optional way to start the pattern, however, it is much stretchier than a normal chain, so it's going to help your finished product to lay better. And it's also just a fun technique to learn. So if you don't want to learn the foundation half double crochet technique and you want to stick with just making a starting chain, then what you're going to do is chain 131, half double crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each remaining chain, okay? So if you wanna do it that way, go ahead. Otherwise, if you're ready to learn something new or you already know and love this method, then here is the uh, foundation half double crochet. Now you guys are going to be making the full size cowl, of course. I am going to be making a mini version, so I'll make sure to tell you the correct amount of stitches that you're making while I make a smaller version, okay? So start with a slip knot, just like you would when making a normal chain length, and go ahead and chain two, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to yarn over and insert our hook into the back loop of the second chain from the hook, which is also the very first chain that you made. So the chain right above this little starting bump here. Insert into the back loop and then yarn over and pull it through. You now have three loops on your hook. So this next step is what makes the foundation half double crochet possible. So I want you to keep your eye on the set of loops that we are about to create right now. So what you're gonna do is yarn over and pull through just the first set of loops, okay? Now, we just created this right here, which is 
as you can see, it's got two loops. It looks just like the top of a regular stitch, just maybe pulled a little bit tighter. Keep your eye on that right here, okay? So I'm going to yarn over now and pull through all three loops, just like I would for a normal half double crochet. Now, if you kept your eye on it, that loop that I told you to watch is right here. And the reason you want to keep your eye on it is because that's where we're going to insert our hook for the next stitch, okay? So yarn over and right into that loop that I told you to keep your eye on. Go under both of those loops. Yarn over and pull through. We have three loops on our hook again. We're going to pull through the first one only. We just created this loop, set of loops right here, so that's the one you're going to keep your eye on. And go ahead and complete that half double crochet by yarning over and pulling through all three, okay? So this is that loop that you're keeping your eye on again. Yarn over and insert underneath that loop, both of them. Pull your yarn through, you've got the three on your hook again, and you're going to create that next set of loops by yarning over and pulling over one. There's that loop again. Yarn over and pull through all three, okay? So that little step that we're doing where we are yarning over and pulling through just the first loop is what is creating these, which are what enable us to go on and make the next stitch. And as you can see, we've got these beautiful loops right here that are going to serve as the top loops of our stitches when we get to round two. So hopefully this is making sense to you. I'll do a couple more on camera here. Yarn over, insert your hook into the loops that you created and kept your eye on. Yarn over and pull through three loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through that first one to create that loop. And then yarn over and pull through all three. Okay, let's do one more. Awesome. Okay, so I want you guys to create 130 of these. And I'm going to go ahead and do a smaller number and then we will come back together and I'll show you how to join this first round. Okay, so hopefully at this point you have 130 foundation half double crochets. I have 24. This is what I'm going to make my little mini cowl with. And so what you're going to do is hold your hook to the right here and run your finger down the length of the foundation chain so that you know that it's not twisted. Yours is much longer, so it's going to be a little bit harder to do, but you'll still be able to do it. And then bring it around so that there is no twist. And insert your hook into the top of the first half double crochet. Take your working yarn and do a slip stitch. Like that and you've just joined with no twist. Now this is going to look like this. There's going to be a big gap here and we're not going to worry about that because at the end of the pattern we're just going to use our starting tail here to sew that closed before we weave it in. So not a big deal at all. Okay, so for rounds 2 through 22 you're going to do this. You're going to chain 1 and turn your work and you're going to half double crochet in the third loops around. So I'm going to show you a real easy way to figure out exactly where to start. We just chained one and turned, right? So the loops created by that chain one are right here. That doesn't count as a stitch, of course. This next set of loops was formed when we slip stitched in the previous round. That slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch either, does it? So we are going to skip over that and our first stitch of this round is going to go right here into these loops, okay? Now these are the top loops of that stitch. We've got the back loop and the front loop. To find the third loop, just gonna turn it a little bit and right underneath that front loop, you're gonna see this third loop. That's where we're inserting our hook, okay? So what we need to do though, because this is a half double crochet, is we need to yarn over and then insert into that third loop, yarn over, pull it through, pull through all three. 
Okay, let's go to the next one. So this is the stitch, these are the top loops, turn it, this is the third loop. And once you've done the first one, on all of the rest of the stitches, it just kind of um, sticks out to you really easily because your fabric is already turned the way it needs to be. So you'll be able to find that third loop pretty easily. My yarn is a little bit splitty today. Let's see if we can get around that. Okay, there we go. Okay, so what you're going to do is just half double crochet in the third loops all the way around. Okay, so I just finished my 24th, which is my final one of the round, and you should have 130 again around this round. And you're going to slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet from the round. Now if you need to use stitch markers to mark the first and or last stitch of your round to help you better visualize uh, where you're supposed to be ending each round, that is totally fine. You can do that. Okay, so that was round two and you're going to do the exact same thing up through round 22. You're just going to chain one, turn your work, and half double crochet into the third loops all the way around. Now I'm going to do a couple of rounds and then I will show you how to move on to round 23. Okay, so I have four rounds right now. You should have 22 if you're following along with the pattern, okay? So at round 23, which is what I'm going to pretend I'm on right now, this is when we are going to attach the new color and start working every other round um, in striping colors. Okay, so the bottom half of the cowl is just one solid color and then the top half of the cowl is in stripes. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach color B and I'll show you how I do it. This is not the technically correct way to attach a color, but I just think it's um, a little bit cleaner than some of the other methods that I've seen so this is the way that I like to do it. If you have a preferred method of changing colors in the round you go ahead and use the method that you are the most comfortable with. Get my yarn organized here. Okay so right now I'm bringing in some white and what I'm going to do I've already joined my uh, round 22 where we're at and I'm going to just put this yarn around my hook and draw it through and then I'm going to take the, the working tail from the first color and yank that down so that that stitch disappears into there. Okay and then I'm going to pull this down and pull this down and chain one. And now I'm turning my work and I'm hanging on to these ends down here so that it doesn't pop out. Okay, so for round 23, we chained one and turned. And again, we're just going to half double crochet in the third loops around. So we know that this is the chain one. This is the loops created from the slip stitch. This is our first stitch right here. So go ahead and half double crochet into the third loop just like you have been doing this whole time. If this comes up a little bit at this point, that's okay. It's going to hold steady and then we'll just uh, pull it tight when we weave in the ends, okay? So go ahead and half double crochet with your new color all the way around this round. And when we get to the join, I will show you how we're going to carry our yarn up on the inside of the cowl so that we don't have to fasten off our yarn every time. Okay, so that we don't have to fasten off all of our yarn every time we, we switch colors and weave in all of those ends, we are going to carry the color changes up the inside of the cowl along the seam. So here's how we're going to do this. For this first join, we are going to join making sure that the tail from color A, so that's the color that we are not using right now, and it's the working tail. We're not talking about our starting tail. We're not talking about the starting tail from color B where we just attached. The working tail, working yarn from the color that we're not using needs to be in front of the join stitch. So it's already laying in front right now so I'm going to go ahead and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet of this round making sure that that working yarn is over here, okay? So, to 
to move on to round 24, we're going to switch back to this color. So we're just going to bring it up and through that loop. We're going to pull the yarn from color B down so that it disappears into those stitches. And we're going to chain one and turn our work. And again, we're just going to half double crochet into the third loops of each stitch around. And then I will show you how to join this color because it's just slightly different. Okay, so I have just finished what represents round 24 and I need to join. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to make sure that the working tail from color B, which is the yarn that I was not using during this round, I want to make sure that that is behind the join stitch this time, not in front, behind. So I'm going to take that working tail, it's the one that's still attached to the skein over there, and I'm going to put it behind the work, and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first stitch of the round. Okay, so what's happening here? Now we're ignoring this. This is just the starting tail. We'll fix that later. But what's happening here is each time we bring our yarn up, it's coming up on the inside of the cowl. So this was the first time that we did it. Now when we switch back to color B again, let me do this real quick so I can show you. Switch back to color B and then pull that color A down into the stitch, chain one and turn. So now you can see that white is carried over as well and they're being carried over on the same side of the cowl. That's all we're looking for here is to make sure that when you carry your yarn up, it's being carried over on the same side of the fabric because that is going to be the inside of the cowl, okay? So you can read the instructions um, because they say specifically um, when you're working on a particular color A or B, whether or not the join needs to um, be made in front of that tail or behind the tail. Um, or you can just look and say, okay, I'm joining this yarn right now and I can see these um, color carried colors carried up on the inside so I know that my tail needs to be on that same side so that it gets carried up along on the same side of the cowl. So hopefully that made sense to you. It's really simple. Um, it, it's kind of wordy in the instructions because I wanted to be really specific, but the concept is just make sure when you are joining each round that your working tail is always on the side that has this yarn being carried up, okay? So all you're gonna do to finish this pattern for rounds 25 through 44, you're just gonna keep switching colors back and forth, back and forth, making sure that you're joining correctly, making sure that your carried up yarn is all on the same side of the fabric, and that is it. And when you're done with that, you just fasten it off. Um, you weave in all your ends. You're gonna come back down to this one right here, and you're just gonna put this through a yarn needle and then you're gonna sew this together. Let me show you real quick what I mean when I say sew it together so that you don't have that gap at the bottom of your cowl, okay? So you're just gonna take it and you're gonna stick your yarn needle through you know, the top stitch over here. It doesn't really matter where that much. Pull it tight, come back around, and you're just sewing the gap closed. Okay, and that's it. That's all you really need to do. And then weave in this end. Thanks so much for following along with this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something new and I hope you ended up with a cowl that you love. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for lots more video tutorials and check out my blog for tons of easy modern patterns. See you next time.